Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Still Sunday, March the 7th, and it's 4.25 p.m. This is another one of Dawn's newsletters. Well, they're really not newsletters. They're prophecy letters is what I should be calling them because they're always nothing but prophecy. And it does take discernment on all of our parts when I share them if you sense something in it you don't understand feel free to drop me an email and ask me about this sentence or that sentence in one of the prophecies okay this came in at 516 this morning alright on March the 7th the first part is by Bill Burns. I always love his parts when he shares, when he gets something from the Lord. And, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get a drink. Okay. And he calls it The Trumpet by Bill Burns. Let belief or faith arise in your soul. I say that because belief is often interchanged with faith. <clears throat> All right. I won't say anything else. I'll just read it. I, I, I tend to do that, interject, and really we should just read it the way the Lord gave it. And then if you don't understand something, you ask him. Okay, or you can ask me. Let belief arise in your soul. Let it rise to new heights. Now you examine it. Examine the belief with which you are fighting the good fight. Examine the belief that allows you to prevail. And as you examine it in these days, you will come to a greater position of belief. For the belief that I have given you indeed was a measure, but you have nurtured it. You have examined it. You have carried it. You have walked with it. You have used it. And it now becomes your weapon. The shield of faith. Remember? It, sorry, Lord. I just had to do that. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to. You know, is that wrong to interject? Or if someone doesn't know, how is that? What is that? What do they mean by that? It's the, our, part of our armor. On, in Ephesians chapter 6, when it talks about for our battles, our war, is not against flesh and blood. It's against the powers and principalities in the high places and in the heavenlies. So therefore, take up therefore the armor of God. Now, I don't have it memorized in the right order, but I say it like this. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the belt of truth. Pull on your shoes of peace, taking therefore the shield of faith so you can extinguish fiery darts of the enemy and take up the sword, which is the very word of God. Quit to divide the lies from the truth. And that little section comes from another scripture that I have just learned to put in there for some reason the Lord led me maybe it's because I had memorized the one and then the other and they just seemed to fit the sword the sword the word is what you use to tell people like for instance the once saved always saved group you use the sword of the spirit to tell them the scriptures to say you must be holy for I am holy nothing unholy enters into the kingdom of God and there's so many but I don't have a list in front of me 
even Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, it says, For it is by grace through faith that you are saved, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But it goes on in verse 10 to say, For we are saved to do good works. I don't have that part memorized, but you read it. Ephesians 2.10 We are saved to do good works. It's like um, the proof. It's like people see uh, when people see you doing good for other people, they go wow, that lady or that man is always doing something for somebody else. That is so weird. And then they one day realize it's because they really, truly love the Lord, see? But they saw the action first, and then they heard the testimony, perhaps, or it could have been the other way around. Anyway, let me get back to this. So, you have used it, and it now becomes your weapon. It becomes a weapon that causes you to prevail in times that are hard. It causes you to come forth with a shout of victory rather than with the wailing of those who are not victorious. Come forth, not as a victim, but as a victor. Walk in the land that I have provided for you. Walk in the belief that I have given you and cause it to grow exceedingly in these days. It is a time in which the seeds of belief that are planted in your heart and are nurtured by the anointing will come and produce a harvest in your life, says the Lord God Most High. Isn't that lovely? Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God Most High. Okay, let's see. Did I want to include this one? I think so. It's short. It's in the Small Straws by Marsha Burns. The road has been rocky. and Boy, hasn't it. And life experiences have been problematic and dangerous. That's the truth. But I have been with you to help you in every circumstance. When I read that, I was like, Oh, Lord, if you only knew. And then I was like, oh, Of course you already know. He remembers everything. <laughs> I say the dumbest thing sometimes. <laughs> if you only knew. <laughs> But anyway, I'm sure he got a chuckle out of that. Oh, let me get back to this. Um, let's see. I have been with you to help you in every circumstance. You are mine. You belong to me. Set your heart on peace and let my peace permeate every fiber of your being. Do not be afraid. Rather, do all you can to put the trouble behind you and be strong. And that was the end of it. And she put, or was led to put, I don't know which, Philippians 4, 6-7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's the truth. Uh, that's a wonderful verse there. Now, this one is by someone named Michael. I don't remember sharing a word from someone named Michael, but I may have, and I don't remember it. Oh, this one was actually received 
23rd of September, 2020, 4.30 p.m. He may have read this in his journal and decided to submit it to her. And she decided to share it with us. It's called, Sup With Me, Your King. I am your king, Shh, Jasper. Jasper, hush. I am your king and savior. And I want you now more than ever to come and sup with me. Literally come to me. Literally come to me. And take my hand in the heavenlies to partake what I have in store for you. This is your destiny in me, to partake of me and my kingdom glory. Never be ashamed of what I put on your heart and what you hear of me to do. Do it willingly, as it is good for you to comply with my wishes in your life. Do not hesitate in these last days, as time is running short. This is your Father in heaven that speaks this day. Oh, this is very interesting. And I would love to hear your, your comments on what you think this means. He wants us now more than ever these end days because we are in the end days even though this was written the 23rd of September last year. Come and sup with him. I'm taking that as communion. Or it could just be when we have a meal, literally come to me. Oh, how I wish. How can we? Does he mean after the rapture, when we're taken outside of time before we come back? Do we go up and sup with him? Literally, we will. I believe that at that time we will see God. It so appears to be from the, uh, what would you say, the um, testimonies I have heard of people dying and going to heaven and then the Lord makes them come back. They aren't allowed to look on God's face. If any of you know of any testimonies where people have claimed to look on God's face and come back, maybe you could share that with us. Just say who it was. I'm thinking of that, that guy. Uh, oh, he had a really long video and it was really wonderful to listen to. And it was, it was old. Oh, Jesse Duplantis. Now he's kind of gotten wayward like the rest with the riches and all. But I don't know his heart. If people give their money and give their money, I mean, he's going to find ways to use it. I'm sure. I don't know. I just... I just feel like he's fallen in with the prosperity gospel people, but but when that he got that, I don't know if you'd call it. It wasn't a dream. It was like he was taken there. And I'm wanting to say he talked with Father, but he didn't die. He just went. Anyway, I'm getting off subject again. Um, 
Never be ashamed of what I put on your heart and what you hear of me to do. Do it willingly as it is good for you to comply with my wishes in your life. Do not hesitate in these last days as time is running short. So let me know what you think about that. Oh, he did put Revelation 3.20, King James Version. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. And that's the end of that one for today. And I hope that that, that encouraged you or blessed you somehow. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every one of us and our devices and our internet connections so we can stay connected as long as we're still here. And I'm hoping any day now that won't be. <laughs> I just pray, I pray that each and every single one of you are counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.